Hey, it's Zana. Welcome back to Solo Trip Podcast. If you are new here, hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am an independent music artist, so I write and record my own music, and I also film a podcast every week. We're diving into different topics about spirituality and esoteric teachings and comedic teachings and the occult and also like self-empowerment, self-help, self-love, how to build a business. We kind of dive into a whole wide range of different topics but they all revolve around bettering yourself and learning the truth about what this world is and all of that good stuff. So I kind of feel really weird saying these intros but I feel like they are necessary because we are getting so many new people that are finding this podcast, finding these videos on YouTube. So I figured I would introduce it but also this video and this topic about the fake collective and fake people it was suggested and asked of me from one of my wonderful Azar Nation family on Instagram and I'll keep her name anonymous but she asked me to talk about fake people and I feel like for me this is a really easy topic to talk about so I thought I would sit down today, get a little bit comfortable, put my feet up on this chair. This outfit does not go, but you can't see the bottom half, so we're just going to keep that down there. <laughs> but I figured I would sit down, get comfortable, and we can dive straight into this wonderful topic. Because when you think about fake people, literally they are everywhere. I'm sure every single person in the world has dealt with some kind of situation where you've had to put up with a person that was being fake or they were lying behind your back or being two-faced or something along those lines. We've all kind of experienced it and maybe even been that ourselves as well. I know I've definitely done that in the past, like especially teenage years, you know, you're trying to figure yourself out and you end up I guess being a bit spiteful or a bit rude when you don't really mean to be but you're still learning you're still trying to grow so you know when you get a bit older you realize that actually you've probably done that yourself and you didn't even realize that you were doing it at the time but I do think that literally everywhere you look we have all had to encounter some kind of situation that's fake and I realize that this topic is probably a lot deeper than people realize when you understand this false matrix system which is a belief system like when you hear the word the matrix it's literally talking about a belief system it's not a physical like there's no physical wall around the planet you know it's not talking about a solid wall it's talking about metaphysics and the fact that it is a belief system which your thoughts are energy so beliefs are energy so you can call it an energy force field around the world maybe but it's not physical so anyway that's a whole other topic and a whole other rabbit hole but when you think about um the matrix belief system like that in itself is fake So you want to talk about people being fake, but the whole reality that we live in is fake. So of course people are going to be fake. Like, of course you're going to come across people that are fake because they're detached from themselves. Like, what is being fake? Fake is literally when you're being inauthentic. When you're, like, in order to be inauthentic, that means that you aren't being your truth that means that you're not being who you truly are so in order to for you to get to that sort of point you must be so disconnected from yourself so disconnected from your truth and from your power and from who you are so when we talk about fake people what you're really saying is that they're not being themselves they're not being authentic they don't love themselves and then obviously if they start expressing that towards you they start being fake towards you and spiteful towards you that's just a reflection of their own internal battle you know their own disconnect from themselves so obviously they're then going to be disconnected from everybody else that's around them because if you're disconnected from yourself you can't connect to anybody else it's a bit like learning to love yourself before you love somebody else you know it's just about being connected to your truth and to your power and to who you are so people like there's so many people that are disconnected from themselves you know I was one of them at a point like a few years ago I was completely disconnected from myself and it's so so easy to do like it's so easy to the point that children are disconnected from themselves 
you know? Like that's how deeply embedded and how common this is, is that from the youngest age, some kind of traumatic experience could happen. And that's it, a switch is flicked. I feel like that phrase sounded really weird. A switch is flicked, did that make sense? <laughs> That really, like, as the words come out of my mouth, that felt really weird. <laughs> but anyway, as a child, like, some kind of thing could happen. It doesn't even have to be a traumatic experience. It could be anything. Like, it doesn't have to be physical pain inflicted upon you like abuse. It could be emotional pain where a parent was absent or they were emotionally unavailable or they were working all the time. It could be a number of, like, a million different things. But those type of upbringings and circumstances and traumas can cause such a disconnect from yourself that then as you go into adulthood you don't know how to reconnect to yourself you don't even know who you are to be able to reconnect with yourself you know like you don't even know what that would look like or what that would feel like to even be able to try and connect back to yourself so I definitely think that it's such a common thing because I mean we're essentially in a plane of existence that's a little bit lost you know it's been strategically created that way to be completely detached from ourselves and running around doing things that like thousands of years ago we were not doing we were not working for a bit of paper we were not in a school system sitting indoors all day we weren't doing all of these things it's only now that we've accepted it as being normal and accepted it as being something that we need to do and we must do that it's been normalized you know but all of these things in society from social media from the career and like the idea of success from beauty and the standard of beauty to the food industry and the food we eat all of these things have been constructed and literally what's the word like it's an agenda like it's been completely constructed in a way that would cause separation from yourself separation from the world around you separation from nature and other animals separation from each other as human beings like all of these things have been put in place deliberately to disconnect us from everything and everyone including ourselves so I feel like the fakeness of, of people being fake is a lot deeper than what you realise because it stems from the programming that each individual person has had through their upbringing and through the TV shows that they would watch and through their parents' belief systems and like generational belief systems that have been passed down. So it really is deep when you think about it and like even down to music, even when I think about music and social media, people can buy likes, people can buy fake streams on Spotify, like you can literally do that, people can buy YouTube views and subscribers, you can buy anything these days and some of the huge artists have bought or their labels have bought streams for them. So it looks legit, but it's actually not because they've purchased them or they've bought Instagram followers, you know? There's so many people that I see with thousands and thousands of followers, but yet, like, there's nobody interacting with their stuff and it's purely because they've purchased it. So if you can do that and you can fake this idea of being an influencer, like, everywhere you turn there's fake shit you know like you can literally get a fake body you know there's people that we idolize with different features taken from different cultures you know like they've got the big butt the tiny waist you've literally turned yourself into a person that's not real it's not something that anybody would be born naturally with you know and that's not even to judge it because you can do whatever you want to your vessel like you're inhabiting a vessel for a limited amount of time you know it's not like it's not yours it's a part of nature it's a part of the earth so if you want to do whatever you want to do to it then go for it and at one point I did want to get a boob job there was a point in time when I wanted that but I never did and now I don't think I would do it but I did really want to at a time so like I'm not judging it or saying that it's wrong or bad or anything like that but I do think it affects people's self-esteem and 
it contributes to this fake society that is based upon a fear mentality and a lack mentality and low self-esteem and that's the part where I feel like it's negative and it's not benefiting the world you know because of course they want these celebrities to be completely shoved in your faces in the public eye with their bodies all manufactured because they want that message to instill into all of the people that look everyone across the world that looks at these people and idolizes them what like what kind of message does it send to you it sends to you i'm not good enough i don't look perfect enough I don't have enough money, I don't have the perfect house, like that's the message that you're constantly being fed on a daily basis is that you're not enough, you know, and it's literally breeding this whole mentality of people wanting to seek fame, wanting to be an influencer, wanting to look perfect and look like a doll, or look like this, look like that, but for, from a space, from a mindset of I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. And I really feel like that's the difference, you know? And I even, like, I'm not saying that I haven't done this. I did this for many, many years, even especially with makeup. There was a point where I didn't want to leave my house without makeup. I didn't even want to go to the shop without makeup, like literally five minutes away. And I didn't want to go there without makeup. And it really is because it instills low self-esteem. So when we're talking about people being fake to you, it's coming from a place of low self-esteem. And if you really look at yourself, you have probably felt that or feel that yourself sometimes. Maybe not all the time, but sometimes, you know, like all, all of us at one point have probably questioned our worth, questioned our ability, questioned our gifts and our talent and our passion, questioned our looks and our image and our body. Like everything you know we could spend forever sitting here talking about this because there's just so much fear so much lack of self-worth and that really is the path that I'm on is like trying to come out of that illusion because it is an illusion it's not actually real it's a belief system which literally means it's thoughts it's just thoughts that's all that that is you know that idea of needing to look a certain way or not being enough because you're not looking that way all of that is just thoughts and because the whole collective is being fed the same story we're all buying into it so we're all believing the same idea the same thoughts and that's why it's become like a norm but it's still not real it still doesn't make it right and it still doesn't make it real or true so I don't know, I feel like I could keep going with the subject and we will go down a full rabbit hole and then back round in circles but I just wanted to like put this message out there because there's a lot of young girls that follow me on Instagram and I get so many comments of like, oh you look perfect, you're this, you're that and it's like no, no, <laughs> not at all, you know and like just because you can think that somebody else looks good or perfect or whatever kind of word you want to use does not mean that you don't do you know what I mean it doesn't mean that you don't and I feel like a lot of compliments come from people from their own lack of self-worth and not because they actually think that that person looks good or perfect or whatever you know like there's people commenting on people's um I feel like I'm saying people too many times now but you can go to somebody who you might think looks ridiculous because they've had surgery all over the place and you can go in their comments and you'll see all of their comments are compliments you know like it might be divided you might have people insulting them and people complimenting them you can go to somebody else that you think looks absolutely stunning like absolute perfection and they'll have people complimenting them and people hating on them everywhere you go no matter what it is whether you think someone's talented or not you'll have people complimenting their talent and people insulting their talent you know so like none of it is real because everybody is just talking from their own level of security or insecurity that is literally what this is because this whole world is perception so when you talk about fake people and people like how to deal with them and what to do about them I feel like you just have to decide what resonates with you. Like, does it feel good being around them? Do they share the same belief system as you? 
or do you have a toxic belief system compared to them? You know, because sometimes it's actually yourself that's the toxic one and you don't realise it. Sometimes it's yourself that has the low self-esteem or the fear-based mentality or the negative perception on life and the other person actually isn't and you just keep projecting on them and then other times it's them projecting on you. So I feel like it's about self-awareness. You have to know what your thoughts are, what your beliefs are, which ones you believe and then look and observe the other person and see what they're saying, what words do they keep saying all of the time to then know what beliefs they hold. And then you can kind of determine whether it feels good to be around them, you know? Like for me, with fake people, I just don't entertain it. Like, they don't exist. You know, I'm not going to be in people's comments reading the positive and the negative or commenting positive or negative. Like, I just don't give a shit. <laughs> so I just don't care to interact with people that don't resonate with me, you know. So I'm only going to comment or like people's stuff if I actually care about what it is that they have to say or what it is that they're doing. And that doesn't matter what they look like or their gender or any other label or box that you want to put it in. It's just about whether the person resonates or not, you know? So if you're surrounded by people that you feel like are fake and you're unsure of what to do or how to handle them, especially if you're in school or like a job or something where you can't really get away from them, I feel like the best thing to do actually is to be you. Like it literally is to just stand in your power and be yourself and not allow whatever it is that they're doing to shift you out of being you literally and that is the hardest shit to do and when I was in school I didn't do that and I feel like that's why now I realize that that's what I should have done so I can sit here and say it now as somebody that didn't do that and I really should have done that you know so yeah I think if you're surrounded by people that are negative and that pull you down you either cut them off and like completely remove them from your life or if you can't you limit and restrict the amount of time that and like energy that you give to them you restrict the amount of time that they can be around you and if you still can't do that because you're in school or some kind of circumstance where you have to see them I would just continue to be yourself like continue to you know when someone says something negative to you or like they try and insult you they try and belittle you instead of reacting or instead of getting upset or instead of lashing back out at them I would literally just look them dead in the fucking eyes <laughs> like I would look them dead in the eyes and just smile you know because can you imagine their face if you literally looked them dead in the eyes smiled and then just walked off and carried on doing whatever it was that you were doing <laughs> their face would be like what the fuck because that's not the reaction that they wanted. The reaction they wanted was for you to fight back or for you to get upset. So I would literally stay in your power and continue just being yourself, you know? The reason that they're even lashing out at you in the first place, the reason they're slagging you off, the reason they're being a bitch or horrible or spiteful or nasty or whatever word you want to use, is purely out of their own insecurity, their own lack of self-esteem, their own lack of self-worth. And really you can kind of feel sorry for them in that sense because we all know what that feels like, you know? We all know what that feels like to feel unworthy. And I feel like people, the best example I could use is like when you're in a bad mood and you're at home like with your family, your mum or whoever it is that's around you and you lash out at them because you're in a bad mood or you're in a, in a relationship, like a romantic relationship or even a friendship, when you lash out at somebody, like if you think about the place that that's coming from, it's usually because you're already feeling some type of negative emotion so then you lash out at the person but you didn't actually mean it and you've just lashed out and it kind of ran away from you sort of thing like the energy just blurted out and then you're like oh shit I shouldn't have done that you know and I kind of feel like it's the same thing except the fact that obviously when it comes to bullying and I know this is such a sensitive subject uh, but except for the fact that when it comes to something severe like that it's 
less just running away from you and just accidentally happens and it's more like it's more thought about it's more strategic like they kind of know what they're doing and they know the type of reaction that they want you know when you lash out you're not thinking about the reaction you're not thinking about how somebody else is going to feel you accidentally just lash out because you're so caught up in your own emotion but when somebody's deliberately being mean to you they're strategically wanting a reaction they know what they're doing is essentially what I'm trying to say so instead of giving them the reaction that they want you stay in your power and I know that that's really hard and you shouldn't have to do that because people should just stop being so goddamn spiteful but really like I want this message to be for the the victim but also the perpetrator because I feel like there's a way to get through to them and it's from more of a compassionate and understanding space rather than just attacking so I feel like if somebody's doing this to you like you literally need to go in your own zone of I am worthy going into your power of I am enough I am love I am you know what I mean like just going into that mindset and blocking out their thoughts that they're throwing at you and going into like using your own tools to go into your own mind of telling yourself how worthy you really are and the fact that the words they're saying are complete lies anyway it's not even true and then those people need to actually look at their goddamn self and realize that they're taking their pain and their low self-esteem out on other people and that's not acceptable in any circumstance I don't care what you've been through because there are people that have been through the absolute worst and they still don't go around treating people like shit so there's just no excuse for it to be honest absolutely no excuse and I do think it's a choice like it's a decision that you make when you're insulting somebody else and belittling somebody else and trying to get a reaction out of them that is a choice you know so anyway <laughs> I feel like this kind of went a bit left but I just think that like because a lot of people that um would ever ask me this question or would ever want to search videos on this topic it's because they can't actually leave those people and remove them from their lives you know most of the time you would just never speak to the person again but if you're in a circumstance where you can't do that it's a lot harder to have to be around them and have to try and figure out the best way to do it and I really feel like it's a case of getting to know yourself finding out who you are regardless and separate from whatever it is that everybody else has to say it's about spending time with yourself and knowing who you are because believe me like the one thing that changed my life and changed my ability to sit here talking to you on camera completely flipped it is purely and simply by knowing who I am literally by knowing myself by getting to know myself by sitting with myself by understanding my mind and how it works it's just complete self-awareness and acceptance of who it is that you find you know of who it is that you turn out to be whether you like certain aspects of yourself or whether you don't that doesn't matter it's just like uncovering every aspect of yourself and then accepting it and then working towards changing the things that you don't like and honestly it is a game changer and I feel like a lot of children struggle with this a lot of teenagers struggle with this a lot of adults struggle with this because you're going your whole life disconnected from yourself and it's so easy to do and this is not a judgment like I said like the whole collective everywhere you look is just disconnected from themselves so it's obviously like it's obvious and inevitable and so easy for that to happen to you because you're surrounded by it you're born in it you're raised in it so like I feel like it's just enough with this shit like it's enough punishing yourself it's enough beating yourself up for not being enough this is enough now you know like no more beating yourself up no more putting pressure on yourself no more getting mad that you aren't thinking the right thoughts or that you aren't happy or that you aren't this you aren't that no more of that shit no more of that self-talk so let's pay attention to our thoughts let's pay attention to how we feel and let's try and work towards moving it to where we want it to be so then when we get in these situations where we don't certain like we're not sure that we like somebody their energy feels off or we're around somebody that's always rude or always mean 
we can handle it better. We know how to handle it by being ourselves, you know? There's so many times where I would walk in a room with people that made me feel uncomfortable and I would crumble to shit <laughs> because I was terrified of being myself because I didn't know who I was, you know? So obviously you're gonna be terrified of like stepping into a room where other people are really in their power, even if they're in their power in a negative way to the extreme of complete arrogance and like, destructiveness but when you step in a room with somebody that's fully like being that dominating that was the word I was looking for I can't think of the word when you walk in a room of somebody completely dominating like that it can make you shrink it can make you go into yourself and like become a hermit and introverted and not want to speak and it's because you're fully disconnected from your power you're disconnected from who you are and I actually it just dawned on me because I always identified myself as like a complete introvert and it's just dawned on me that most likely a lot of introverts or people that say that they're introverted it's probably not that you are it's that you felt inferior for a long time you know so now you have this coping mechanism of needing to be alone and of preferring to be in your own energy because it's intimidating or because it's like it's dominating it's like I can't even think of the word it's really heavy when you walk in a room with somebody that constantly belittles or constantly looks down upon you know even if they're not actually doing that and you just interpret it that way because you're not in your power so I do feel like a lot of introverts actually if you looked deep enough into your emotional body and into your mind, you might find that when you're in your power, so when you're surrounded by people that you're comfortable with, you're actually quite loud and outgoing, but it's only when you're around new people that you then feel a bit like uneasy. And I feel like a lot of that is because you're trying to find the balance in your own power and it's starting to throw you off and then you're trying to get back on and then it throws you off, you know? And that is kind of what this journey of life is, is finding that source, that power of who you are and then learning how to just embody that completely so that no, no matter what goes on around you, no matter what anybody does, where you are, anything like that, what your environment is, you're able to stay grounded in that and know exactly who you are. So, I think I have covered everything on my list. Yeah, I did say releasing judgment. It's, but it, I feel like mainly it's releasing judgment from yourself. Because once you do that, you'll stop judging other people too, you know? So, I just think we're at a point now with all of this information and access to information where we can really start to do better and be better and if each person was to tap into their own power without needing to belittle or judge like being in your power is not having to look down upon other people it's not having to insult anyone it's not having to think you're better than anyone it's com like completely grounded in just who you are it's your truth it's being authentic you know it's being your bubbly self or your introverted self or your fun self or your sad self. It's being all versions of you. Like allowing yourself to be all of those versions of you and not being ashamed of any one of those parts of you, you know? Because we're all multifaceted. You're not just one thing. You're everything. You're so many things. So I think especially like adults now if they were to start teaching children I mean to be honest most children coming through now are a lot more aware and a lot more conscious than previous generations but I think if they were allowed and given the freedom to express themselves and be themselves the whole like shift would happen so quick because they would then turn adult like turn into adults and then their children would be given the same freedom and like this is how the collective elevates. This is how the frequency raises is because we start to just be ourselves. We start to be more authentic and to tap into our heart center and give each other the space and the freedom to do the same. And of course, not everybody is gonna do that. So this is when you have to discern what's right for you and what's not and who resonates with you and who doesn't and cut off those people that do not. And also remember that your school years 
are temporary okay I do not like the school system in the slightest but that is for a whole other video but I just want to say like those years are so temporary that you will leave there and you never have to speak to anybody that doesn't resonate ever again so just really try and get into your power while you're going through it and trust me when you get to adulthood if you practice it now while you're young when you get to like 50 years old you will be so in your power you will have built, built like an amazing life for yourself with a really empowering belief system and like all of the media and the social media and all of these standards of norms and all of this crap will not be so embedded into your psyche psyche psych whatever the word is your mind <laughs> so yeah but anyway i hope this video was helpful and i hope that it didn't offend anyone because that was not my intention i'm just like showing my perspective and i can fully admit that i have been in some of these places that were not positive you know like i wasn't putting out positive energy as well so i think we just all need to do better and learn better and there's no excuse now because the information is there you know so i hope this episode helped thank you so much for listening and watching and you i can't even get my words out now because why do intros and outros make me feel so awkward <laughs> but i can run about fucking fake people for half an hour and be fine that doesn't make sense but anyway so make sure you check out the description box below for all links to my music and also i'll send uh, 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 what is going on? Our Zar Nation community, like, I would love for you to come and join because I'm delving even deeper into healing modalities, different ways to, like, uncover your mind. I really dive into it further. It's completely free, like, it's not a subscription or anything. It's just a private Instagram group and I also have a weekly newsletter on my website. So check out the description box below because I literally go into so much detail in those spaces. I really just want to connect with you guys. Like, it's not about charging or any of that shit. It's just about connection and sharing my perspective and hearing yours. So yes i hope this helps you are not alone so come and join us over there and also my phone number is down below as well so you can text me you can dm me like i'm literally putting myself out there so much because i want to just connect with you and like it's isolating this journey you know it can be very isolating and i know that there's a lot of people going through a lot of shit right now so let's connect you know you can connect with each other and we can just help each other grow and elevate and do better and live better you know we're creating heaven on earth here no more hell no more hell <laughs> but yeah so that is it for this episode thank you so much for listening on the podcast apps and watching on youtube i really appreciate you and i will see you in the next video bye Oh, yeah, I think he like me Yeah, I'm icy, cooler than the white tea Oh, yeah, I think he like me Yeah, I'm icy, cooler than the white tea Oh, yeah, I think he might I'm the thing he like me, my range all white Oh, yeah, I think he might I'm the thing he like me, my range all white